Welcome to memory analysis for hedgehogs. The last video was about deobfuscating most .NET samples that are obfuscated using DE4 dot. Now, DE4 dot is a very good tool and makes things very easy, but there are samples out there that are obfuscated in a way that DE4 dot does not work on them anymore. And um, I think those are perfect examples to, uh, to you to understand why you should actually learn how .NET assemblies are built up, um, how they are executed and how, what, what different um, structures they have and how they work together. So it makes sense to, to actually learn the low level stuff to understand and tackle problems like these. Um, so, you know, reverse engineering is not just about being able to use a tool, but also being able to figure out why things don't work. And yeah, let's take a look at this sample right here. So, we will be using de dot on the sample and see what it does. So, first things first, um, de dot detects three different obfuscators, Babel, Dotfuscator and Goliath. And uh, it then attempts to clean Babel.net. Like it just chooses the first one and attempts to uh, deobfuscate. And um, it shows a lot of error messages or most of them are empty, but what says, well, something didn't work. Okay, uh, try the latest version. That's the latest version, so. Um, then it uh, also tells us, okay, we found several obfuscators. You can use the minus P option to force um, the E4 dot to use one um, or attempt the, what is it called in English? To, to use a deobfuscator that fits to that um, obfuscator right there. So if we want to use the deobfuscator for dotfuscator, we just say minus P and DF for dot for skater. Trying that, does not work. And we say GO for Goliath, and um, that also does not work. I mean, it creates a clean sample, but it is not really de obfuscated. Um, so, <clears throat> no success right here. Let's take a look add this sample with the nspy and see how it looks like if you try to de compile it. Okay. So, there's a sample. And um, we go to the main method and then you see, oh, that's an empty method. But if you execute the sample, you will realize it uh, does not immediately um, exit. So if the main method was really empty, um, they would, you know, just uh, start the process and then terminate it right away. And uh, that's not what is happening. So this rather looks like this is the uh, result of the obfuscation. If you look into other methods, you see they are also empty and uh, some of them cause errors like this. Um, so argument out of range exception and there are other, one, other exceptions right there where the decompilation just doesn't work right. The only thing you can gather from with, with, uh, gather from the names is that this is probably a stealer because well, obviously it says so project Evriel dot stealer and it seems to be able to steal cookies and to look into your clipboard. Um, but that's uh, everything you can say uh, with out being able to deobfuscate it, well, when you don't know how you're done right here. Um, 
So, and now the thing to know, if you have ever um, programmed or developed a program in C-sharp or Java or anything similar, you will probably have the impression that the main method is the very first code that is being executed. That's not true. Um, the main method is just the first thing that's usually uh, important for you as a developer to know, but there's code being executed before that that does, um, well, initialization. So there are constructors for classes, constructors for instances, and um, in uh, .NET assemblies, the constructor is called .ctor or uh, .cctor. So ctor stands for constructor and cctor for class constructor. And um, they are executed before the main method is. Um, so we can um, access the constructor of the module, which is guaranteed to be the first code being executed before any other method in the module. And uh, we can access it uh, with right click and then say go to module.cc2tor. So class constructor of the module. And when you do that, you see, okay, here's actually some code in there that's quite interesting. Um, the module has three calls to three different methods and all of them are also in here. And if you look at the names, they tell you which obfuscator this is. It calls itself null shield. Stop unpacking this tool. You cannot unpack this program. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see if this is true. And um, one of those weird methods like has a lot of code doing some stuff with pointers and so on. So this does some fix ups for the uh, .NET assembly so that uh, afterwards the code is actually correct. Um, let's see, we can now thankfully set a breakpoint here in the um, constructor. So set the breakpoint and we execute our sample. And now we simply say step over until we are, we should arrive at the main method. So it now loads the module again because some things have changed in there. So it creates this, you might realize that this is another, well, instance of uh, our module. And now we are at the main method and it's, um, actually readable code, so readable code. Uh, we can now take a look into the other code and we see, yes, something is happening here. Uh, we, we can now read the code. So basically it's deobfuscated now and we are able to see which cookies are being um, accessed and so on. Um, perfect. But this is still just in memory and we usually want to, to be able to analyze this without um, uh, running it all the time. So we can simply save this module the way it is now to disk. Um, I think it's file save module. Yeah. And I would give it a different name. <laughs> Uh, some just name it sample two and uh, it uh, suggests that this module is a DLL this is not the case so let's just say it's a Windows um, type module because it should have an entry point where it starts to run right um, so it's not a DLL okay we save that and we stop it from running and uh, Let's make a, um, let's take a look at this sample. 
you see the entry point is not there anymore so there's no way that this this file won't be executed if you double click on it um, because no entry point is specified but we can fix that and we we will do we will fix that um, that's the main method that should be there and uh, set as an entry point also what we also need to fix if you execute this and the um, the code in the cctur method um, is still not right so you know this will be executed again so it will probably damage um, the module instead of with it leaving it as is so we need to remove this code um, we can edit IL instructions in here and then you can right click and say NOP instruction so NOP means do nothing no operation and uh, so instead of calling the three methods it will just do nothing okay and now we save that save all save that yeah so um i did not find a way to set the entry point at the end spy if you know a way tell me i didn't find any um so i use a different tool to change or set the entry point for this file and that's il spy in combination with reflexil uh, i will put the link below you just download Reflexil plugin and then you um, put the DLL into the same folder as ILSpy. Okay. Choose a second sample that has no main. Here's the Reflexil plugin button. So we press that and it will open up the window for Reflexil. And then you can, um, oh yeah, yes, you just um look at this sample too and you can you find the window here for setting the entry point and that's in um, project Evrial program main say okay and uh, save this so save no not the code uh, you have to right click and say save as and it uh, already says okay sample 2.patch.exe so let's save it this way and now we will test this um, patched file in dnspy because ilspy is not a debugger it's just a decompiler but uh, with dnspy we can see if things work correctly let's remove this it's confusing otherwise and uh, open this up. So yes, now the entry point is correct. We set the breakpoint here. We run the sample. Okay. And yes, now, now it's still running. Yes, now we are at the entry point at the first uh, instruction and we can step through the code so everything's working as it should and we patch the sample it's fixed it's deobfuscated and that's it so uh, that's great and now I think or I hope that this is not just a let's say that this is not just a tutorial for you to understand how to unpack null shield but to understand why it's worthwhile to learn about structures uh, of the files that you are analyzing. In this case, learn how a .NET assembly is built up and how um, the bytecode looks like and how the code is executed, basically. So that's, uh, yeah, maybe you learned a few things today. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching and see you next time.